are so frightening, they're mentioned in the scriptures as divine punishment. Locusts have been harbingers of doom from time immemorial. Notorious they may be, but this is exceptional. It's 70 years since Kenya witnessed these sights and sounds. A lunar new year like no other. The streets of Wuhan almost deserted. A city with a population close to that of Ontario, where no one is allowed to leave. Most residents are doing as advised, staying indoors. Or they are stretching the resources of Wuhan's hospitals. This footage appears to show bodies lying next to patients being treated. On Wall Street today, a sea of red. The Dow down more than a thousand points, three and a half percent. An ugly day for Wall Street, the worst we've seen for stocks in years. The stock market in a steep nosedive over concern the coronavirus is already cutting into the global economy. The market erasing all of its gains from 2020. Today. Some healthcare workers like Imaris Vera say the risk has grown too great. This isn't going to get any better. America is not prepared and nurses are not being protected. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. As residents rode out the storm, some in shelters, that others in stairwells. That is after all what they did before they set up their so-called caliphate. God is calling all of you to not be afraid. Fear not, because God is with you. Fear not, because God is your God. Fear not because God will strengthen you. Fear not because God will help you. Fear not because God will support you and hold you up by his victorious right hand. I am your God. That is, I am above you. I am over you with my mighty hand. I am with you, beside you. I will help you from whatever angle the enemy may come or the attack or the threat. I am all around you as your help. I will strengthen you from inside out. I will be your strength and I will uphold you from underneath you. Do not be afraid. And there is one great ground for fearlessness. God. You have a God who is infinitely more powerful. He is God. He is God. Do you believe him? Do not be afraid. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in 
God. What else can we say? Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. He identifies God, made the God of hope. Now that probably doesn't mean the God who has hope, though you could say, I suppose, God has hope if you take out of hope all the uncertainties that we often have. But it probably means the God who who gives hope, the God who overflows with hope. Just a few verses earlier, I think verse 4 of chapter 15, it says, everything written in the Old Testament was written for our instruction so that by the encouragement and steadfastness of the Scriptures, we may have hope. So everything God has ever said in the Bible is written to give hope to Christians. And so he calls him the God of hope. And then he prays this, may he fill you with joy and peace, and here comes the key phrase, in believing. The God of hope is filling with joy and peace in, through, by believing. So if you lack joy and peace, the, the, the battle point, the point of warfare where you're engaging is this in believing. Are you believing the promises of God? Because that's how he ministers hope to his people. So joy doesn't just happen chemically. <laughs> magically. The Holy Spirit is here. He is working this, but he is working it through faith. So we believe in the promises of God. Through the believing comes joy and peace flooding into the heart of the believing saint from the God of hope. When you believe in the God of hope, what you're having at that moment is hope in the promises believed in. That's what it means to believe a promise. If you believe a promise that good will be done for you tomorrow, that believing feels like hope. That's what hope is. It is, it is faith in the future tense. Faith is the hope of things to come substance of things to come, which is hope. So hope and faith are almost identical here, and yet he's saying that when we believe slash hope in the God of hope and joy and peace flood our heart, the result is you will abound in hope. So your joy in tribulation was rooted first in the promises of the God of hope, so that it began in hope, but as you are proven in those experiences of life and joy and peace rise up instead of bitterness and anger as you're tested with trials, you have more hope according to chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. And so probably when he says, may God fill you with joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope, he means I want the God of hope producing hope and faith, which yields joy and peace. I want all of that to have an overabundant effect on more and more hope. So I picture the Christian life as a kind of spiral up to, into ever-increasing hope, which leads to ever-increasing joy and peace, which leads to experiences with God in trial, which lead to more hope until we get to the place where we walk by sight and not by faith anymore.